Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Damaris Maria Grossman, and this is the Mindfully Integrative Show. And today we have an awesome mindful chat with Dana Miranda. She is the healthyrich.co, and she's going to talk to you about your health in realms of personal finance and how does that go and what does that really mean so i really can't wait for you to talk with her and discuss further because i can tell you in my experience the more that i learned about money the better i felt about my health so let's chat how's it going hi damaris thanks for having me yeah. um, it's, it's going great i'm really excited to bring these topics together that's really cool. So how have you, um, so first off, um, I always say, what's a little fun fact that people may not know about you if they're looking you up. Yeah. So, um, definitely something that's never in my bio. Cause it, it tends to not be relevant to the work I do now, but, um, in high school, I was kind of, a um, a, like, a. I was a good student in high school. I was a cheerleader and an honor roll student. Um, I went to a great um, state university and then I dropped out of college before earning my degree um, and have like kind of always taken like a, a counter path um, since <laughs> since then. Um, so it's always kind of fun to like let people know that I was a cheerleader and an honor roll student because I don't think that they often expect that. Yeah, but just, be, well, I mean, you didn't finish college per se, but I mean, you could always mm -hmm. get a degree like in without done if you really wanted to, right? At this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got, you know, I've got the experience in my career. I feel like I got, got my degree in, you know, in, being in a writer and, and, yep, and in life. And when you're a writer, so how much have you, you've mm -hmm. also written too? Yes. Yeah. I've been working um, primarily as a writer for um, a little over a decade um, working as a freelance writer and I was a staff writer and editor for four years. Uh, that's how I got my start in personal finance specifically. Before that, I was just kind of a generalist freelance writer. And then I got my first job um, with a site called The Penny Hoarder. It was a personal finance media startup. And I didn't know anything about finances when I started. I just knew about writing and reporting. And so I learned about personal finance through that job and really kind of fell in love with it. Um, and then um, went on the last two years, have been working full time as a freelancer again with other um, other publications in the industry and decided to start Healthy Rich because I wanted to um, have uh, my own approach, create a platform and create a space for some of the voices that I'm not hearing as much and seeing um, in the space in, in the work that I've been doing so far. I love it. So what, um, so first let's kind of like go with, you went from your writer. So obviously you're good mm -hmm. with your words and good interpreting and discussing things, but what brought you into this? Like you said, you were with some previous and personal finance, what is kind of your platform? Like, what is it your interpretation or what kind of got you to there? Cause like, I think for mm -hmm. me, I was like, um, just overly spending emotionally thinking. And, and I was like, okay, I, I got to get what I need in this. And there was, I was feeling a void. What was it that made you change and turn to say, hey, I want to like learn this and, and teach other people about it? So as a writer, I've always been focused on both education and storytelling are kind of the things that I really enjoy. So I love sharing other people's stories as an editor. I love helping other people tell their stories um, at, through my podcast the same way. I love talking yeah. to other people, letting them tell their stories. And um, as an educator, I love kind of breaking down, um, demystifying any complex topics. Um, and in personal finance, there's no end to the complex <laughs> topics that we need to kind of unravel. So yeah. I've, I really enjoyed doing that. And that was part of like what I loved about personal finance. And I also loved sharing people's stories. So their journeys of kind of whatever it was to achieve their financial goals, even just like their experiences. Um, and as I got more into the work, it became a lot more of what I was doing was on kind of the educational side, like breaking down the concepts, explaining things, answering people's questions. And I was missing the storytelling a lot. And also seeing that in personal finance media and in education, other platforms, I'm not seeing a diversity of voices. So from um, women, people of color, um, people with different like class backgrounds, um, LGBT people, people with disabilities. There's a lot of voices that are 
left out of the space. And the space is really dominated mostly by people with middle-class backgrounds, white people, um, and men in a lot of mm-hmm. cases. There are a lot of women, there are people of color, um, kind being of more being more, in, yeah, open, but not seeing, as much a little bit, little by little. Yeah. The, the, the biggest brands are still dominated by kind of white men. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to hear more of those stories and it's pull so away from the more prescriptive kind of personal finance, just um, one right way of doing things, because I was seeing a lot of that. And I think we need to hear more of people's stories and experiences and understand the nuances more of our relationships with money. And we can really only do that through hearing a variety of stories. So I started Healthy Rich to make space for that and to focus on that kind of storytelling. And the storytelling. But I I mean, it's Mm -hmm. so important, like as a, like even for myself, I mean, I, I, provide a space for people to tell stories in their, their health journey, mm-hmm. right. And their overall health, but like having an individual like yourself on, on is so important because personal finance, or there is many definitions. First off, you know, we'll have to talk about what's your definition of personal finance and mm-hmm. what's your goals. But I think it's as in very um, important aspect for people to understand where their mind is and, and what is, what is their history prior you know, a dollar um, could be something to one person, but a dollar is so different for someone else. And then that perception and their life's stuff, like all can, yes. can really unravel. Um, so I can imagine mm-hmm. their stories are very different than if someone that was brought up rich and someone was brought up poor or, or do they even understand what to do with that dollar? Right. So I can, yes, it can be pretty complex. I can, I can just imagine. Um, Absolutely. And it, it, there's the obvious kind of like, what did you learn about money growing up? How much uh, access to resources and wealth did you have? So your like direct relationship with money, but there's so much more about your life that affects your relationship with money. So your mental health is something people are talking about a lot more um, Mm -hmm. and how things like anxiety and ADHD affect your spending behavior and your, you know, your ability to stick to like all these things that people say are the right ways to handle money. Um, Your physical health, um, having a chronic illness really affects your relationship with work, which directly affects your relationship with money. Um, And the work that we do is in our culture, unfortunately, really how we kind of like assign value to people. So when you're in a position to be unable to do work in the way that we kind of consider the right way to do it, um, it changes your relationship with yourself. It really changes kind of how you value yourself and how people around you value and treat you. And so all of that kind of all of that that's going on inside of you, your histories and your, um, and your experiences affect every decision in the moment that you make with money. So it's a lot more than just sort of the numbers and the kind of rules, um, and, and the boundaries that we want to set around money. It's all those things, your whole self that you bring to every decision that you make. I I could not agree with you more. I mean, I, I talk daily about this mindful way or mindful tips, right? And in that is it's understanding the habits that you have and your previous baggage or whatever that may be. How do we re change those patterns and, um, the pattern of money? It it's part of the equation. You know, you're trying to understand the money is going to give you more time and more freedom or, or a better understanding of who you are. And I think that, um, those patterns and those habits um, to change are are a challenge. And like you said, it's the the health can it can be overcome or it can be identified. So then you can overcome. Um, and and I think it's just it's super under like super important. So what is yeah. your um, definition of personal finance initially? I love that question. Um, and this is why I love coming into spaces that are not necessarily focused on personal finance because no one in the space thinks to ask that question. Oh yeah. Um, so it's totally, so I have a do- totally different view than most of the Yeah. People. <laughs> so that's why I love, you know, I mean, new I'm perspectives wealthy, I'm wealthy in a lot happens. of realms, but mm-hmm. I wanted, I would like know what that means for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I really see, you know, the personal finance niche is kind of a detour from traditional financial media, which was very focused on business and kind of the markets, like the larger kind of macro economy. Um, And then personal finance in the last maybe, you know, 50 or so years came in and started talking about 
people's individual financial situations. And so we look at the niche as like household finances, income and, and budgets and, and expenses and things on an individual level. But I'm pulling back a little bit more and seeing personal finance. And I'm not alone in this. I'm seeing it happen in the space and other places too. But this is my focus is that it's about your relationship with money, what it means in your life, how it comes into your life, how you use it in your life. Um, it's about money as one sort of pillar or input in your life. Um, and I think it stands alongside things like health, physical health, mental health, um, food, diet, exercise, um, all these other pieces that sort of make up like who you are and the experience that you have day to day. I think um, I see personal finance as a piece of that. I could not agree more. Financial health is in my chapter of one of my books. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I am. Um... Absolutely. So like, what's your take on, so I say health is wealth, um, mm -hmm. in different aspects. What would your take on that? How would that, how would that be for you? Just the, if that is, I don't know if that's an, if you can answer that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm curious about, can you say a little bit more, um, when you say health is wealth, what it means yeah. to you? So when I talk about health as wealth, I identify it as in two aspects, one in the financial, actual having money, the more um, financial means or understanding of, you know, debt and ha not having as much, you know, uh, or having more availability gives you more time and freedom so that the health then gives you more freedom to then do activities that will make you more pleasant. The other part of it is the health and the wealth of is just understanding um, so that you are uh, aware of where there may be some mishaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with all of that. I think they're all very, the, the ideas are very integrated. Uh, I think that health is, and you were touching on this a little bit is a form of wealth. And I think that we need to think more about the different kinds of wealth that we have in life, in addition to the actual sort of financial assets that mm -hmm. we own, um, which is a very important part of wealth that, you know, gives us a lot of power and privilege, but there is also the wealth of privilege and the history that you bring in the, um, maybe your, the wealth of your family, not in the, again, the assets that they hold, but the mm -hmm. abilities that they, um, can provide for you and the care that they provide for you that some people don't have access to all of those things affect your financial situation. Um, and we're seeing that a lot in the discussion around student loan cancellation recently. I've seen some great discussions about what that means for people based on the like history of wealth that they that they have, because debt is a very different thing if you come to it with an enormous amount of wealth versus if you if you don't um, your you know, the, the carrying that debt makes a big difference. Um, but also, but I, but you need to expand kind of the way that you think of that wealth beyond just the, the financial, um, like side yeah, of it. No, I, so I, health is, health is a form of wealth in that way. That's a really long-winded way of saying that yeah. your, your, um, mental and, and physical health can really make a huge difference in your financial situation as well. I know my, my questions are always a little uh, different, but I, I'm, I just feel like, uh, you have literally a wealth of knowledge of talking about what, yes. what is necessary for individuals. And I think mm -hmm. the other part I was wondering, um, what's your take on, um, in, so this was one where I had an argument with my husband about debt, understanding debt. Cause I learned it so different. Like I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about student cancellation of having debt, not having debt. Right. And, and so his take on it is, was, is still a little different than mine. I get it now in his perspective, but what is your take of debt and whether you're wealthy or not, is it good or bad? Or do you have, are you indifferent? <laughs> um, I say that debt is morally neutral. So okay. I would fall on indifferent. Absolutely. Okay. I think that there's no moral value to whether you decide to take on debt, why you decide to take on debt. Mm -hmm. And I also don't attach moral value to what you do once you have debt, how you pay it off, whether you do gotcha. um, 
how you sort of deal with it in general. I don't think that there is a right way to do it. There's absolutely a way to deal with debt that will that could result in paying more or less interest on that debt that would cost mm -hmm. you more or less money over time that would affect your credit score in a certain way. But none of that has to do with your intrinsic value. And none of that is a moral judgment. It is just a practical reality because of the way that our financial systems are set up. Um, but there's a lot of debate about like what is good and bad debt to take on. And I don't think any of that is is um true for every person i think it's all just what is what do you need in your life in the moment um is that to take on debt is it to pay off debt quickly is it to um set aside some debt that you have and and deal with it at a later time is it you know is it to work out some strategy to slowly pay something off um there's tons of ways is it to declare bankruptcy there's tons of ways to deal with debt in your life. And I think that they all are correct if they are what you need in the moment. That's so interesting that you say it, like in the moment, because it's like, mm -hmm. um, when discussing with, like I said, my partner, he was like, oh, you know, debt can be used very well. And I came from the camp or grew up in the camp of, you have to really have no debt as much as possible other than your house and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I really didn't understand. I would straight up was like, oh, okay. Didn't realize you could leverage it like that or, or use it in the right way. Or in general, I was also learning about these um, fire. I mean, I guess I'm financially independent person that I could retire early in a sense, or you could mm -hmm. probably also. Congrats. But what is your, what's your take on that? Like, debt and people don't want any debt. Like they're like, okay, I want zero mm -hmm. debt. Like I don't have a car payment anymore. You know, yep. my mortgage is paid through house hacking. What, what for you, what is, is that important? Or you, like you said, there's no like emotional part there. I, Those for people me, that want to be like, no yeah. debt, they're like, I want <laughs> zero debt. I want no, like, no, nothing to be worried is that important? Mm -hmm. Like my husband's the opposite where he's like, Oh no, I, I like to leverage something if I'm at 0%. And I'm like, Oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I just, <laughs> yeah. so Ruby, I'm like, all right, does that mean I have more time? All right. That means I can go walk the dog. <laughs> okay. What are we talking? Yeah. It, so a hundred percent of the time, I would say it depends on your goals. So for me, I don't have an emotional attachment to de to debt or sort of an emotional reaction to having debt. I know a lot of people are interested in paying off debts that they have, not because it's the necessarily because it's the most financially sound move to make, but because having debt gives them anxiety. Like oh, having okay. debt can okay. mean that, could that you have unpredictable costs in the future. Yeah. Um, and it can mean that you're going to get calls from collection agencies. I've been in that situation. That's very anxiety inducing. So there's tons of reasons that you might want to get rid of that because it's not right to have in your life. Um, I don't know. I don't have that. I, my goal is really just to like in most like with my student debt in particular is to just keep my monthly burden, like my burden in the moment as low as possible, as low as possible. Um, is not to pay it off as quickly as possible. I'm also not trying to uh, get a mortgage anytime soon. So the amount of debt that I have and how it affects my credit score is not a huge concern for me, for some people that might be. So there's tons of, you know, that's where you have to look at kind of the practical effects in addition to the emotional. Don't get a house if you don't have but, to. <laughs> that's my, <yeah. laughs> unless you're going to house hack or like I have a two family. So like, mm -hmm. or unless you're going to house hack or my, yeah. do it if you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy renting. I enjoy the freedom of it and being able to just call somebody when something goes wrong and let them take care of it and move, yeah. you know, easily whenever I want to. But I came from that same background of just debt is, is the worst thing that you can have. Like I know pay off. I didn't know any better. I didn't know any yeah, better. Yeah, um it's really it was really considered just kind of like a moral evil, like a big sin to carry around debt. Um other than again the mortgage, which is sort of this kind of assumed thing um in our country that like this is just how you do it because you're supposed to own a home. And so we take on these massive amounts of debt. And then for my generation too, um, we kind of did the same thing with student loan debt as well with without really understanding the implications of that. So it's, if that is how you feel, I think the first step to dealing with debt that I always recommend is to get into yourself and figure out what is it about that 
debt? How do you feel about that debt? Like if you're trying to get rid of it, why? Why do you want to pay down the debt? Um, is it because it's going to serve uh, your higher goals in some way? Or is it just because you feel this pressure based on what you are supposed to do? What is the right thing that people are telling you to do? And if it's that, may investigate that a little bit. Is it the right thing for you? I, I, I love that when you come into the sound of what are you like going back and underlying and looking at the root of where, where what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. I talk about root cause of health in general, and we're yes. now you're trying to talk about what's the root cause of why are you spending underspending or just your behavior? What is your mm -hmm. behavior in this and how can it be? I don't necessarily think it's a solving, but how, what is your solutions and you're yes. helping people find the solutions that is personalized for them because everybody's yeah. situation is probably so different. I think all those questions are probably very much the same. All of those root causes are very much the same. It's, it's getting in tune with, you know, people have different names for it. Kind of like your inner child, like what are the experiences that your body is carrying from your, your childhood experiences mm -hmm. and how are those affecting what you're doing now, how you're reacting to the world around you now, like that stuff creates mental health reactions. It creates physical health reactions. It affects how you deal with money. Like it, it affects how you relate to food, all of those things. Yeah. They kind of end up all being kind of the same questions. Yeah. It, it's, it, I could not agree with you more. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's so important. Um, how can like those reach you? I know that you said you have an upgun, you have a community. Um, mm -hmm. what is first off before that, I want you to reach you. What is one major tip that you like to like talk to people about? Like, I know it's personal finance, but what is that? What's mm -hmm. like a major thing, that theme that people ask you about? Yeah. So it's, um, I talk a lot about, um, what I call budget culture, which is kind of akin to diet culture in that the way that we teach personal finance in general is focused on this prescriptive money advice and restriction and deprivation as a solution to all of your financial problems. Mm -hmm. It's very um, based on individual responsibility. And so my recommendation is to divest from budget culture and do a lot of what we have been talking about through this whole conversation, which is tap into yourself, feel into what's right for you and think more about um, approaching spending in a mindful way that I call conscious spending, which is to use that money in the way amazing. that feels oh right God, for I, you. This is a yeah. whole other realm. Like we have it, you got, you're getting me into a whole other tap. Like you're, you're taking yeah. like the diet conscious world mm -hmm. of you know, paleo diet, vegan diets, these people that yeah. are getting so restrictive, you're taking it into a budget con thing. Mm -hmm. Having a budget isn't the right way of looking at it. And I think, and yeah. it's like, wait, 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 take a minute. You're, you have to take a step back mm -hmm. and there's another way. And it's like, yeah, same thing with the, yeah, the nutrition and health stuff. If you don't take mm -hmm. a step back and look at what's going on, the change, the change isn't going to change. Your behavior won't change. Yeah. Stop, stop looking for rules from outside of you and, and get, get to know yourself more and, and figure out what is right for you. And a lot of what I like to do too, as an educator is help people understand the, why people say that those rules are correct to, to kind of start to question the premise of just their kind of innate correctness and instead understand like, the reason that, for example, that we say certain kinds of debt are good and bad is because we start with this assumption that becoming as rich as possible and having as, as much wealth as possible is the goal. So mm -hmm. if you understand that that's the premise, you can take a step back and start to question, is that my goal? And if that's not your goal, then why are you following the rules and the path uh, that is meant to get to that goal. So you have to start to, you know, understand where we're coming from as a culture and how you fit into it and, um, and then get to know yourself and, and make those moves that make sense for you. Wow. That's, that's pretty profound. I think people need to hear more of you. Um, what Thank about you. <laughs> your take on, um, like all of these budget rules that people are giving you, um, do you have like, do you take pieces of each or is it just very personalized when you're working with individuals? It's, it's very personalized. Um, I don't give any 
individual advice specifically right, not, because it, but you're an educator yeah. you're edu- i mean on right. your platform you're yeah. educating so understand like, understand what all of these approaches are um and probably no individual approach is right for you because it's made sort of generic and so it can't be made for your situation but there are things to be learned from all those approaches and you can understand why those you know kind of pieces that you can take why those might work for you um so but for the most part i would say um be cautious against any kind of boundaries that someone else is setting any restrictions that that are being set by someone else which a lot of budgets do even when they're trying to be um like have more flexibility in them that a budget in itself kind of by definition comes with restriction so be cautious of taking on that restriction that's prescribed from outside of you that makes that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. how about um do you have a tip or um one of your favorite kind of personal finance uh, ways for you'd like to share um So one very kind of practical tip, like people kind of wonder, so then if you're throwing away the budget, like how do you practice conscious spending um, in in reality? And conscious spending. Yeah. In general, I would say you can sort of approach it with any kind of mindfulness techniques, which you, I know, talk about a ton on this podcast. Um, So anything that sort of helps you tap into yourself, like meditation and yoga, I personally recommend journaling a lot because it works for me. And because I think it's also a great bridge from people who are used to budgeting um, to do something like a spending diary, which is reflecting on the spending that you're doing maybe in a day or a week or a month. Um, but it's more than just looking at the, the money. Um, it's taking time to actually, um, kind of use that more like a journal as a reflective space. So to say, like I spent 416 on a latte and I was meeting my friend and we had this conversation. So you can start to connect, see sort of the more holistic picture of where money fits into your life rather than just, a spreadsheet that shows I've been spending $40 a week at Starbucks. So I need to cut that out of my budget. Um, Starting with journaling or any of those sort of mindfulness activities that helps you see the, um, what that spending is contributing to your life can help you understand um, what cutting it out might mean. So if you're, you know, if you just say, I'm going to cut that Starbucks out of my budget Um, you might be missing out on all of those interactions that you were having with the people that you're, um, that you're meeting there. Mm -hmm. Um, Or or finding an outlet, like, or if that maybe it's not for Starbucks a Mm -hmm. week, but it's like, okay, you want, you're missing a connection. Like it's so pretty profound as you're talking about, as I talk about connections and health connect, it's important Mm -hmm. quality connections are so important to someone's health. You're they're going there for a social interaction, right? That how do they still have that social interaction without spending four days, maybe at a Starbucks mm-hmm. right? or something of that nature. Yeah. No, but that mm-hmm. is so, so profound and opening mind opening because mm-hmm. what you're evaluating is, okay, you've spent probably, I don't know, a hundred bucks this week on Starbucks, but what's the reasoning behind it, this mm-hmm. connection. And then connections are so important. Like, right. oh my God, especially because of this past health, health, pandemic thing that you know happened people are reaching for that so now we're trying mm-hmm. to see what can we still do to not cut it out and I love that this not giving up but kind of gaining um absolutely look at the cool. the purpose that it's serving for you are you ordering in food because it is giving you a Comfort. moment to rest at the end of a week and time to spend with your family um there's there are a lot of reasons and if you just sort of look at a list of how to spend less money, how to budget. Um, they, they tend to just have these very impersonal pieces of advice that seem really obvious ways to cut spending out. Um, but it doesn't consider the purpose that that's serving in your life. I, I and love so your, you, oh. taking a, a per- personal look, um, lets you question a little bit more and think about your relationship with money, how you're using money in your life instead of just, you know, a spreadsheet of numbers. I hope I see a book from you, conscious spending. I hope you do too. <laughs> It's just, it's just yeah. I love it. it sounds, yeah, sounds absolutely. Profound. I need to read it. Thank you. <laughs> and you got to be on again for like a webinar or such, because I think there's plenty more for us, us to discuss. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's keep talking. <laughs> so thank you so much again. Mm-hmm. And how can we reach you? 
Um, you can find um, Healthy Rich at healthyrich.co. And uh, the best way to stay connected, I recommend subscribing to our email list um, for free. You can get um, notifications of all of our content and messages from me. It's also just a great way um, you can easily reply to any emails that I send out and we can start a conversation, which I love, like, um, like I was saying earlier, um, I want to hear kind of everybody's perspective and stories. And so it's a great way to connect with people individually. Um, so yeah, healthyrich.co. Um, if you actually go directly to healthyrich.co slash subscribe, you can sign up for the newsletter right there. Perfect. I'll put it in the show notes for those to read you. And I really appreciate you being on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you guys for listening in. And as I say, make sure you find a mindful way each and every day. Have a wonderful day, whatever it is for you.